G'day, Brown Coat from Coro Cottage here. Thanks for hitting the button on the review. Um, we are going to do a review for Horizon Zero Dawn's DLC, Frozen Wilds. And big thanks to PlayStation New Zealand for supplying us with the early review code. Now, Coro Cottage is a New Zealand Aussie site uh, for video game reviews with a bit of a leaning towards 30 plus gamers with families. Um, we've all been writing for years with uh, two of the lads, Barry and Rich, writing for major publications for the better part of a decade. So we definitely know our games, but uh, KC is aiming to move more into some video content. So let us know what you think in the comments below. If you dig our stuff, give us a like, eh? even give us a subscribe. Um, any input would be appreciated. So, anyway, put on a woolly hat, prepare for some frostbite. I'm going to try and hit most of the major elements on this hefty DLC pack. But I can give you an assurance I'm going to do my best to stay away from any spoilers, including story or some of the beasts that you'll come across, because I know that's half the fun of it. I also want to sort of take it as read that if you are looking at this DLC, probably you have played the main part of the game. Um, and understand the mechanics of uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. So anyway, what's new? Um, the Frozen Wilds is a map addition to the main part of the game. It's filled up in the north part uh, and it's occupied by the Banook. Uh, it has all new areas to explore and a few new beasts, um, which as I said I won't spoil for you. Uh, there are new schools under the Tracker banner um, most of them are quality of life additions really, like picking up resources while still being mounted on your on your beast that you've tamed, um, or even just simple stuff like holding more even inventory. Um, they're all pretty tame to be honest. Uh, I don't want to say I'm disappointed, but I kind of am. I was hoping for something, you know, a bit out of the blue, like being able to have an airborne mount or, or ride a glint hawk and control where it fires or something that would have been awesome but you know this stuff is it's okay but as I say it's pretty tame um, it, it makes the moment to moment gameplay feel a bit more fluid but if anything it's a lot of those additions could have been dealt with by way of a patch as opposed to just adding new skills so there's mount pickup uh, mount repair overriding machines repairing them getting more shards from salvage uh, that sort of stuff like I say, nothing amazing. Um, the Frozen Wilds has its own stat tracking, collectibles, weapons, and a new currency called Blue Gleam. Uh, in addition to the normal traders, Banuk traders have weapons, armor, which are all pretty high spec. The weapons are sort of a real slow draw, but high impact. And the Blue Gleam is spread throughout the world, uh, and you can collect it. It's quite an expensive sort of currency. Uh, so it takes quite a bit to collect, but the rewards are pretty good. I reckon the, the gear that you can pick up is, is not too bad. Um, my tip would be to buy the maps from the traders early on so you can find all this stuff. A lot of it you'll just come across um, much, much easier if you can just check on your map. Oh, I'll divert across and pick up that blue gleam. Um, the Frozen Wilds quests open up just by making your way up and climbing into... Uh, the Banuk territory. Uh, after meeting the Banuk, you'll learn that there have got similar issues facing them as the main sort of quest through the the Horizon Zero Dawn game, which is machines are becoming deranged and violent, and you've got to try and figure out what's going on. The core quest line is very well done. Highlights the whole new culture and a harsh region, um, the brave warrior race known as the Banuk. Uh, really really interesting cool get up cool clothes uh, and they have this underlying underlying value of, of a good death um, is better than turning away from a challenge gorilla again have hit that balance of open world um, then linear quests and then puzzles mixed in with those quests and then obviously the overall combat is still just slick as ever uh, the beauty of this northern territory cannot be understated uh, the use of light and the weather cycles going from heavy snow to moonlight pushing through the trees just sort of infuses that feeling of cold into every part of the experience it's really slickly done 
Um, as an aside, and I just kind of want to mention this as a as sort of a quality of life thing for gamers, is whether you're playing this DLC or whether you're playing the main part of Horizon Zero Dawn, go into the menu, go to the um, HUD options, and change the settings so they're essentially always off or dynamic in terms of, of the HUD interface. So then you're not contaminating this beautiful game world with like quest markers and compasses and things. They can all still pop up, you just brush against the touchpad on the controller and they'll pop up again so you're not going to get lost. But I mean you just look at the difference of having all that crap on the screen and then having just Aloy exploring. Way way better, so definitely do that. Anyway, um, on to audio. And audio's always been a strong point of Horizon Zero Dawn, so no surprises, the Frozen Wilds just sounds great. Um, on a surround sound system or surround headphones, the full dynamic range is used and it, it's immersive as hell. Um, the crunch and squeak of, of walking on dry snow, um, the sound of just sticks breaking under Aloy's feet, the eerie silence of standing in like this abandoned power station hydroelectric dam that just hasn't been used in hundreds of years um, just sets such an amazing tone. And then you go into explosive combat and it's the grind and clunk and smash of, of machines and your weapons going off. It's so cool. So once again, Gorilla have just continued that quality from the main game into this DLC. They've just got that that audio is dead on to give you hints to the world and also just immerse you in uh, whatever activity you're undertaking. Now depending on the region that you come from, like America, Australia, New Zealand, whatever, Frozen Wild hits that, that DLC prank of $20 to $30. Um, and I reckon it's worth every penny. Uh, it is a big chunky piece of DLC. Uh, it's it's only if you're a Horizon Zero Dawn fan that I would say you need to invest further because Horizon Zero Dawn's a big game already. Um, you're not going to get anything super different from the main game in terms of uh, the content on offer. But if you're like me and have pumped in 50, 60 hours into the core game, then you're just going to lap this DLC up. Uh, Aloy, the characters that are involved, the unfolding narrative, where you don't get the full story until you really start pushing into into the uh, quests, um, the culture of the Banuk, and then obviously the beast combat is all just excellent. So, it's sort of in summary, it's the same for sure, but it is still awesome. Uh, the skills are probably my biggest letdown. I think there was some real opportunity there to, to give a, a whole new lease of life on terms of Aloy's combat, but it still remained the same. Some of the weapons have changed, sure some of the skills make life a bit easier, but it still comes down to just playing through a big open world and hunting bigger. All in all, I'd say go for it. It's a great piece of DLC. So anyway, massive thanks if you've made it all the way to the end of the review and sticking with me. This is a new sort of a process for us. Um, we've done a lot of written work, but video is uh, a new angle. And uh, if you've got any questions uh, or comments, please chuck them in. I'm uh, checking every day. I'm happy to respond, uh, happy to help wherever I can. And uh, if you have dug the content, mm, subscribe, share, even just give us a thumbs up would be awesome. Thanks a lot.